Okay, for today's video, I wanted to cover um, a brief overview about Falco um, by SysDig, right, the Kubernetes threat detection engine. Um, this is really the de facto that is defining the cloud-native runtime security space. Um, you'll encounter this in the certified Kubernetes specialist exam that I've recently taken and obtained as well, so it's um, likely to also something you want to familiarize yourself with, right? But let's also kind of understand um, what's under the hood of this. So I want to kind of cover what is Falco, right? How is the architecture defined? Right? How does it essentially work? Um, this really helps put together some of those components to understand how it intercepts what we call uh, Lin Linux system calls right? um, from a native perspective as well. Right? And then as far as customizing rules, we'll cover kind of what the rule sets are out of the box, how you kind of customize that to your needs um, for your specific notification system, whether that's via Slack, Microsoft Teams, um, or ever your security operations um, has their notification system alerting set up as far as Kubernetes is concerned. So just a quick intro, you know, what is Falco? What does it essentially do? It's a cloud native runtime security um, maintained by Sysdig. It's an in incubation state as far as the cloud native computing foundation at this point in time. Um, mind you, this is early 2023. It's likely gonna go to graduated status, um, ideally sometime later this year, if not early next year, at least from my perspective, um, given its uh, widespread adoption, it's already a part of the curriculum for CKS. So there's already, um, more adoption throughout the community as far as that's concerned. So what can it ex essentially check, right? Um, now, this is just a brief statement as far as this. Um, it's very wide in nature. Um, you define the rules that are out of the box, right? This will um, be located in a Falco folder, um, falco underscore rules YAML. And then um, it also has a falco underscore rules .local .yaml. Um, We'll go into that a little further as part of the demo, right? It can look for any operations that can be deviated from what is the known behaviors, right? For instance, if we're running privileged containers, executing certain commands, writing um, into certain processes, operations, and areas that we're not necessarily supposed to be writing into, right? Or if someone is um, compromising any of those areas, this will be um, real-time detection as far as that's concerned, right? So moving into the architecture again, this is a high level. Um, uh, think of this as part, part of your YAML configuration, right? And then your rules are also defined in YAML, um, your Kubernetes audit events as well, right? This will go to essentially the engine within itself. And then a part of this engine, it will go through this process down here. Um, and then Falco will sit essentially at the kernel module, right? Um, so think of your user space right here, this ring buffer as well. It will essentially uh, populate from um, a log set, right, what is going on as part of the detection mechanism, and we'll go into how that kind of breaks down. But also just want to give you a good piece of what components is that made of, right, so we can obviously understand it a little bit further. Moving into this next slide, right, as far as deployment is concerned, you have a couple options. Um, you could do a Docker container as well, um, which is not listed here. You could do a daemon set if you want um, Falco across your nodes as well, right? Or you could download the binary, make sure you obviously verify that binary, platform binary as well. And then um, the easiest, fastest way to kind of get um, started with this tool, right? Kind of explore the functionality of it, see um, kind of, you know, its use cases, its benefits, as well as get familiarized would be um, via Helm, right? So Helm is that package manager, right? Think of if I had to run um, a subset of, YAML files, Helm essentially packages those up. It makes it really easy to deploy a large subset of YAML files and configurations out of the box, right? So we'll go over that um, as far as the next um, set of slides here and then how we can populate some of the alerts and then what's that output, right? So for generating alerts, we're gonna run a privilege pod. Um, as far as a quick start, I'll cover um, you know, some of these commands, what we're doing exactly. And I like to really break this down so it makes um, clear sense, right? But we also have an understanding where the communicating with the kubectl API. Um, we're telling it you know, to run a certain um, pod, right? And then we're running the specified image. We're telling it to restart never. And then we're gonna exec into that pod, right? We didn't define any YAML. This is just a quick um, way to populate that. And we'll show you some of that output, okay? Okay, so um, we're running a Kubernetes cluster, right, uh, 1.26. The reason I prefer using killer coda for um, all of these demos and things of that nature is because we get a uh, cube atom cluster, right? So if you're familiar with bring your own cluster, there's a, a number of distros out there. There's Kind, there's K3s, uh, Micro, uh, K8s as well, um, Minikube. Um, as far as testing is concerned, but since the exam covers QBAT, and that's essentially why we're going to use this platform, right? So let's get started. We'll run a Helm repo add Falco security. Okay, so we do see, um, sorry about that. Let me break that up. Let's do Falco security github.io charts. Okay, so now we have um, our chart. 
So if I do a Helm repo list right now, we can see what that chart is, right? So let's run a Helm repo update, make sure we have everything, okay? We got our nice message, uh, happy Helming, right? Okay, now let's run Helm install Falco, Falco security, launch Falco. We'll do a namespace, Falco. So if that namespace doesn't exist, that's why we're running the next command, right? All right, so let's create a namespace. <laughs> so we'll create a namespace called Falco, right? Um, let me clear that. Make sure. Okay, and then I'll reference that command right here. We'll go through that install, right? So we can clearly see that um, it's going through that install. It will essentially start um, running from that portion. So we'll do a cube cuddle, get pods, right? We'll do an output wide. Okay, okay. Let me do, um, let me do a dash A. Okay, so we see a couple um, running already. So what I like to do, at least for this, um, especially dash A, I'll do a watch command. This essentially will show us um, in real time as it updates, right? So we'll see um, it's essentially initializing, going through its motions for that portion. Um, and remember, this is in a different namespace. So as far as that other command, um, when I did an output Y, that was going through the default namespace. So just a quick error on my side note. So I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this recording for now. We'll come back when that's fully um, running, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? Okay, so uh, we do have Falco up and running. I had to take a uh, different approach with the binary, um, specifically for some installation issues I was having, um, just to show you what is populated, right? So I am in node 1. Um, let's, let's navigate to all this jargon that's going on here. So I got my nodes and realized that um, the pod privilege is running on node one, right? So Falco was essentially um, limited. I had to refresh this whole instance. Um, it was only enabled on the control plane, right? So that's why you have to kind of also understand how Falco works. If it's not necessarily daemon stuff, then it won't be all nodes. If you do uh, specifically a binary, right? I did this on the control plane, the host to isolate it, um, which is a good practice as well. Um, but if you wanted to detect on other nodes that you have in your cluster, right? Or thinking cluster wide operations, that's um, something to consider. So after running through some of this in the background um, just to make this quick and simple for you so i call essentially falco to start um, populating those logs right so we have a couple things here so a shell was spawned in a container with an attached terminal you'll see um user six let me make this a little larger for you okay so we can see that a specific shell um, has been opened as far as that's concerned right now um one way you can also let's let's just do a control Oh, oh, no, let's do a grab so it makes more sense. Okay. Okay. So now let's kill that. Now let's run Falco A again. Okay, so now we're going to generate some stuff. Um, so you can kind of see where, where we're going here, right? So you see up here, I'm back on the control plane, right? So a different um, tab. Now what I do is I uh, run an exec command and tell the API, hey, this is my pod um, that we deployed. Now, this pod was um, through the command line, right? So it's not declarative in nature. So I'm already in here just to show you um, what privileges I do have, right? And this is why this is such a big um, concern or risk, if you will. So if I run a who am I, I'm already root, right? So if we don't define um, the container you know, username or if it's run as a user in the security context realm for uh, YAML purposes, things like that, um, will by default be in root command. Therefore, we can cause some chaos, right? Should this um, pod be compromised in nature as well? So now let's um, you know navigate to some folders and generate some stuff. So we see how we have Falco already in there. So we'll see FC Falco. So this is where our roles are going to live, right? So if I do a Falco, um, well, let's let's do Falco back. Yeah, well, let's click like that. So you can become familiarized, and this is going to help you as well um, in your day-to-day -day operations when you're thinking about Kubernetes security, right? So you can kind of get familiar if you're running AWS CloudTrail. Um, if you want a specific um, output, things of that nature are going to be in some of these files here, right? Um, so they do a pretty good job as far as documentation is concerned, and I always um, want to make sure that, you know, I spread the message about open source con contributions because this really does empower a lot of resources for the community, right? So please get back um, to Sysdig when, when you can, right? Um, and it can be documentation or it can be code reviews, things of that nature. So when we see here, we have our syslog output. So this is enabled um, as true, right? Um, let's say we didn't want that as in terms of the syslog, we can do that as false. Let's say we had a specific file we want to generate to. Um, this file is going to go to uh, events.txt, right? And then we have our standard output here, right? Um, so we have some other details down here um, that goes through 
um, some more configuration items, right? Now again, uh, let's also give you a look in LS, right? Screen. Okay, so if you're going to load um, roles, it's recommended, in my opinion, you should make a copy of your file prior to um, loading that, right? So let's say I wanted to uh, change a certain um, output, things of that nature. So what I'll do is I'll essentially go to our, let me do, So this will show you your custom roles, right? Now you can have um, roles that essentially could be like event type, right? And I'm just doing a very simple format. I can do a description, track events in a area of a container, right? And then I can start um, defining essentially what my custom roles are. There's a whole uh, slew of documentation, but I'll show you kind of how this breaks down as well, right? Um, you want to definitely use this um, file when you do um, apply this back to Falco, and then you want to do a hot reload. Um, but ensure, let's, we'll, we'll definitely cover some of that in another video, um, but I just want to make sure you're familiarized with this. So let's go to uh, Falco, rules that demo, or actually let's do a cat on the way. Okay, so a lot of stuff coming out here, right? So we can make this a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so you see how uh, they essentially, they or how the rules are defined. Um, so you have rule, modify container entry point, right? A description to help you out um, for reference, right? So let's say you had to change um, set output um, to that terminal, right? Things of that nature, you wanna customize that. Um, so essentially this will be a field descriptor equals name. So it'll look for this um, specific area. You can also put um, a, some other commands that will have what that condition is. Now, some of these are written in um, Rego, I believe. I'll verify that in the background. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's been a long day. Um, so then we'll also look at as far as what that output is, right? So the output is gonna show you how that's gonna write. So it's all user and then username. Um, these field types can be um, customized, right? They provide a whole um, page of documentation types of how um, you can populate those fields, right? So depending on the requirement, let's say you wanted um, a certain time frame, a certain user, or maybe you're just concerned with the process ID, this will be that area. So finishing up uh, from where we left off, just wanted to show um, this output as far as being um, the last area that even picked up, as you can see um, that I was modifying some of those files, right? So it tells you the user is essentially in the command they're running, right? Nano, Falco, local. Um, and then it restarted from this point, but I just wanted to show you that that even picked up as well, right? Um, so what we'll do is we'll control C, we'll clear this, we'll exit out. Um, again, feel free to definitely look at the documentation.